right if you look at this um, screen these are screenshots from the twitter page of this person and this was the person that actually led me to down the thread that i discovered them um, joko manuel's uh, story on but i just wanted to see the kind of conversation that took place because uh, it did get quite a lot of um, attention now, at a 20 they use iphone 12 what kind of work do you do so this person is kind of like raising an eyebrow about the ability of a person at the age of 20 to be able to afford such a device actually like somebody told him look these things are not even bought wholesale you know, like at once people are paying little bits of money over time so i said that so now people started responding to him i know 17 years old and 14 years old doing very well in the teen space earning thousands of dollars every month i know a 19 year old who makes an average of 1.5 million every month as ux designer money no be no, money no be by age they take make them i beg i know of um bamdila Nibalusi from years ago now i mean uh maybe 20 2013 thereabouts uh when he was making over five thousand dollars every month as a writer as a freelance writer today Onibalusi has invested his money into so many other areas i understand several other, anyway several other areas like catfish farm business and i do believe if i go by some things i've been told maybe something real estate or other, whatever whatever my point is he has been interviewed by media in and out of africa even including the guardian newspapers and of course and forbes he's been listed in forbes <laughs> and the young man you can imagine could have afforded any of these devices though i do not see i have never seen him showing those things on on in any of his photographs or videos so my point is um it's not an issue it's not a, a function of age when only balance was just i think 15 or so he was already making thousands of dollars while some of us were struggling to even earn a hundred thousand you know in naira you know so it's not an issue it's about learning about the opportunities that today's technology and internet um conveniences affords us you know so then uh you can see what this one said if you're restarting a business that solves high income problems you'll be able to afford that excellent good point so it's a matter of you identifying people that are ready to pay good money for you to do something for them and you'll be in money it's not about your age if you have the willingness to do the do the thinking and impl implement the idea that you think up then you'll get enough money to buy even something better than an iphone 12. i've just i'm just going to be 22 next two months guess what my enterprise is worth over a million dollars if you start early in life doing legit stuff you get there i started at 100 level currently a graduate you see he found his purpose very just like look this one is even a graduate a, a maker and joku who we're talking about is bigger than him and it's not even a graduate he didn't even finish the first year in university so it's not an issue you know um he said now the same question your father this is a danny danny boy and the first question your father was asking that made him a poor man or got follow others do what they are doing or get ready to be in a uh be a hype man or gate man you know um i think there's one more i wanted to point out that it was a response to me okay let me see if it's still there okay poverty is a big problem for for niger some people don't even believe that you can make fifty thousand um 50 100k in minutes without stepping out of your house go to youtube and watch videos find good solid coins to buy in the crypto deep exactly a few months from now your mentality will change stop indoctrinate poverty mentality to others bro iphone is not an achievement and this i mean this too uh, the person who said go and learn on youtube the person is making a powerful point a lot of what i know today i learned is online and earn a living way 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 superior to what others do and if i had not had the kind of challenges i had personally on the on, in my private life i would have done way better now somebody who's a young person who has no obligations who has no responsibilities nobody he's feeding you can imagine he can do so much better because he's able to focus and that's why this person that wrote this thing was way off but again that's the whole idea at least he spoke up and people have responded hopefully he will take the responses and he'll go and dig deep and learn more and then be be wiser you know that's if iphone in, in some a young boy's hand that boy is probably just paying for it off his parents credit card it's nothing you know it cost them it's not like here that you have to go and get all the money together at once and pay over there they pay it in bits and it costs it it, it becomes, becomes like nothing so um the mentality has to change the older generation have to wake up and understand that this is a new world even in nigeria now you can buy phones and pay as you go i mean i know a friend of mine that i helped to, to discover that and his phone was stolen that within the same day or the second day he already had another phone is and even better and more expensive than the one he was using before well at least if not better but as just as good 
so my point is it's no longer an issue it's not an issue of age it's not an issue of uh, education it's an issue of you being to, willing to learn the skill required for you to excel and to to to, to prosper and some of, most of the time the internet is the platform that you're going to use so hopefully people will take this and uh, uh learn from it all right i wish you well i'm so excited to be able to share this story um with whoever may be looking at this um because i've been speaking for years about the need for the educational system to be completely overhauled this young man you see on your screen right now his name is um njoku all right njoku um what's his first name now Ooh, i've got to find that but basically this young man is currently is now <laughs> he's trending on the internet all right he's the ceo of uh, if i could i'm just gonna get the name laser pay that's the name of his company it's a blockchain company joku manuel that's his name and um this young man his story is um, so 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 relatable um it resonates strongly with me because um it's the kind of story that i would have wanted for every young person to have on the african continent because it reflects the possibilities a total departure a total departure from what we've been told from when we we're young you know and the experience that was described in his story that i'm going to read out to you as regards how his parents responded to him as he tried to find his path to where he is today where he succeeded it's just it's just further confirmation of the fact that we need to completely overhaul the educational system and we need to even overhaul the brains of many parents i have teenagers <laughs> and i do believe all of them have the capacity to leverage their intellect in the use of uh, technology the way this young man is doing and it doesn't matter how early you start or how late you start the importance is you just discover yourself and technology allows you to succeed at any at any age i'm living proof of it but let me just go into the story like i said so um i'm just going to scan through okay i'm just going to pick, pick some pieces okay then of course there's going to be a link for you to read the article yourself uh, i intend to do a pdf version of this write-up and make it available in print form to my own kids and if you are really wise as a parent if you're listening to this if you're even a friend to somebody who's a teenager if you're any child anybody especially on the african corner who's still trying to uh, there's no job i don't have a job i don't have money this is it and it's not just uh, a blockchain it's generally coding i keep telling people all the time a five-year-old can learn to code it's not me saying it it's a fact proven go to india you see it and it has nothing to do with whether you have school set or not whether you went to secondary school or not coding is like learning how to read and write it's the same thing once you master it it means you can do anything right with the, with, with the coding with the pro, with programming code that's why you have very young ch children in some parts of the world like america you hear that they hacked into you know the website of cnn and th things like that they do all kinds of crazy stuff and you're wondering how can a little child know that because it's a function of how much time you devote to it it's very important that this message gets through to people stop pushing your kids into conventional university education you see what this young man said when he was in university and his father when well, his father is not a it's not an illiterate okay let's go All right so after njoko manuel's father seized his laptop for coding too much and not force facing his studies he dropped out of school to focus on coding look at that that was his own response three years later he has become one of the best blockchain engineers of his generation traveled the world and now runs his own startup laser pay a crypto his own startup the name is laser pay a crypto payment gateway now that's just like a kind of an abstract a synopsis of this whole story and the, the message there was he dropped out of school after his father seized his laptop all right for coding too much you need you need to hear what the guy had to say about his experience when he was in university that made him decide to focus his energies on coding as against studying in school in, in university and I, I was still talking with a parent um this past week in my, my my daughter's school and she was asking me for advice about her children i told her i said i don't care if the child is the most gifted child in mathematics don't let the child just focus on mathematics let the child have something that involves using a skill maybe she can leverage the mathematical aptitude yes but let her get into something the world is demanding for this something that the world wants so for instance coding like this just njoku. njoku was very good in maths because he was exposed to it as a result of his own initial uh, um, upbringing and as a result that helped him when he decided to focus that attention on coding you know so the thing is don't just let the guy go into the abstract let it be related to the real world 
we we'll call it real world relevant education it's so important very little of it is happening today everybody just wants the bloody piece of paper it doesn't work anymore there are no jobs waiting for you you need to create solution make yourself to become an attractive person by virtue of the fact that you can come into people's lives whether they're bigger than you or smaller than you and you can make a difference that will help them to save money or make money if you can do that they'll fall in love with you they don't give a damn if you do not have a formal degree they don't care they just want to know what can you do for me let's take a look at this man's story Joku's greeting was casual like so this gentleman the, the journalist that's um, um speaking to him here is going to talk to him as um Damilare Dosumu. Okay, this was published on 24th of February 2022. This guy is training right now, so you can Google his name. Um, so Njoku's greeting was casual, like his outfit, a black round neck t-shirt on jeans, boisterous laugh, blah blah blah. All those kind of was busy in Lagos and the murmuring voices around it. Anyway, these guys were doing this thing online. It was a, we, we, we wasn't a face to face. All right, so he says sorry for the noise, bro. Um, it's busy week. We're going out. Uh, or bitter sometime next week so all hands are on deck so this guy was uh, trying to explain why even they were trying to have this conversation on camera um there was this noise on the background so he had his team working he has his own company at 19. all right so anyway according to this gentleman they turned up the cameras and dove into the conversations now let's pay a, a crypto payment company now let me be clear i have never shown too much interest in crypto as a something i want to delve into as a person I've had so much news about it. I've had you know, more creole of them making noise about it. I've just kept looking at it. What I am waiting for is for one of my own kids to discover crypto in this legit manner and venture into it in this legit manner and then teach me about crypto and involve me in it. That is what I'm looking at. I don't want to go and be the one to discover this and start trying to convince them. I have my own path. I have my own direction. I know what I'm doing. I know where I'm going. I will leverage crypto. If they don't come up on board, I'll find somebody else to put me through. But right now, that's not where I want to burn my energy. But I do believe my kids have the time and energy to do that. I have not yet found any of them that's willing. That's why I'm doing this video because I do intend to pass this video on to them. I want them to explore the, 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 the world of cryptocurrency as it relates to being a solution provider like this chap. Create your own solution. Do your own coding. Partner with other people who are doing that kind of, kind of thing. And then become somebody that can actually generate income for yourself. Legit income in thousands of dollars like this chap is doing at 19 and you need to see how he has gone from the age of 13 to 19 the guy has had more work experience more income earning experience than many of us all right okay so um during his bitter phase okay he said uh, a critical payment gateway started uh, startup Njoku co-founded with abdul fatai suleiman and prosper ubi was launched in october okay october this i'm speaking now today today is the 27th of february october was last year 2021 <laughs> it's not even six months old and the reception has been massive during his beta phase the crypto startup has been endorsed by several tech and blockchain enthusiasts as a necessary innovation needed to accelerate crypto adoption in africa but what is even more remarkable about laser pay is njoku it's 19 year old ceo who seem to have emerged, emerged from nowhere to become one of the most sought after young tech darlings in Africa. If you doubt that, when you finish reading, when we finish going through the story, you will understand what he means. This guy was rejecting job offers, three hundred thousand naira and dollars, sorry, three hundred thousand dollars job offer. This guy was saying no and deciding to go ahead on his own because he was already even getting funding for what he wanted to do. Nineteen years old, and you know how I found this guy's article. One guy who's completely clueless but i can't blame him was writing on twitter saying if you are uh, uh if you are 12 years old or 17 years old or something a teenager and you're using a an iphone probably iphone 10 or something uh, wh 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 where do you what, what do you for a living where do you get that kind of money from because like the guy was saying it's impossible for someone so young to have that kind of iphone because of the value of the iphone so somebody responded to him and said first of all if it was in america or europe or developed societies even the iphone you're talking about he wouldn't have had to bring up the box sum of money to buy it he would have been paying it in little 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 bits of um, um, installments or whatever they call it because over there they don't necessarily have to buy things at once you get to pay off your credit card in, in very manageable bits so first of all that's not that's, it's not an issue that's why you see a little child over there can have an iphone it's no big deal secondly you now said there are so many kinds of um skills you can have especially in the tech world today that make it possible for you to earn that kind of income and be able to afford that kind of phone even at the age of 12 13 14 15 16 all over the world we have used like that so for this guy to be asking this question it was clear he was living in the in the past he did not know and then somebody brought up 
joke with story and say, okay, tell us now, this 19 year old who's rejecting all this kind of big money and he's starting his own company. What are you going to tell him when he's holding a 19, sorry, a, a, an iPhone latest model or whatever? So then I, I said, who, who's this guy? And I started reading the story. So the point to be made is this. We need a lot of our old generation to forget whatever they think they know and wake up and open their hearts and minds and humble themselves to learn from the new generation, especially the new generation that is involved in legit stuff. Technology and the internet makes it possible for young people to make more money than your, your ancestors combined. Understand what I'm saying? This is the truth. All right, let's go on. Um, now, but they are saying there that uh, Njoku's story was not a, it's not a, uh, an overnight success story. You know, so like, it wasn't a sudden emergence, as you can see there. All right, the, the Njoku we see today is a product of a seed planted seven years ago. All right, seven years. So you do the, do the math, okay? In Port Harcourt. In fact, you see, there's going to be a picture, picture you see here. The, guys came to, the guy came to Lagos for the first time just only a few weeks ago. <laughs> so he didn't have to be in Lagos to succeed. For those of you who think Lagos is heaven, you know, Port Harcourt is there. So many other cities, you know, you don't have to be in Lagos. Because technology makes it possible for you to ignore geographical boundaries. What it matters is what your brain can offer. And that's what this guy has used. He has used his brain to open doors for himself that many people could not open with even the cars they have, the big cars they drive. All right. The Njoku we see today is a product of a seed planted about seven years ago in Port Harcourt, the biggest city in South Africa re region of Nigeria, in 2015. Uh, oh, sorry, in 2015, at, at the age of 13, Njoku and his brothers were casually introduced to computer programming by their aunt. Now, this aunt, this is where the adults can play powerful roles. You don't have to be there round the clock with a young man or the young woman, but just one minute of your time just to point the child in the direction that you notice the talent can help him or her growing. That's all identify the talent in the child provide meaningful direction or suggestion or prompt and let the child flourish support when necessary that's what this lady did she stayed out of the way she didn't try to micromanage this young man this auntie should be given a medal that's my opinion and they didn't even bother to mention her name by the way so who was a robotic engineer since then njoku chose to write code and never looked back look at that from the age of 13 while some other young people here are wasting their energies in church spending so much time playing around trying to prove that their parents have more money than the parents of their classmates this one at the age of 13 discover code i said it before from the age of five you can your child can become a programmer and can be making money believe it or not that, and they are even best equipped for it young people no no stress in their minds they can focus and discover the best ways to code become super efficient at coding and make a lot of money you'll be so proud of them if you just allow your child to to discover that way of life instead some people some of you are forcing your children to go the traditional route lawyer doctor all the nonsense we need to stop this because many of us don't even know how the new world works that's why we always walk raising eyebrows when we see young people in big money you think everybody's yahoo no that's not the truth those that go into yahoo is what they don't know due to the adults in their life they do not know that they can take those same talents they have and turn it in the direction of the um, things like this the programming right the lofty dream that followed was wanting to build an operating system like Bill Gates had or a social media platform like Mark Zuckerberg did. He wanted to be the African Mark Zuckerberg and told everybody that cared to listen so, including his mother, who wouldn't stop jesting him for it. This is one of the things I have. I, I do not know. I was with the CEO of a company in uh, Kotonu. He's, uh, he calls it um, Clinic Shosu. That's like the hospital for shoes. And it's a very big place where people come to learn how to make shoes. I mean, at various levels, and they have all kinds of machines, and you get a state diploma from it. And he speaks French, so I, I couldn't speak in English with him. But my point is, one of the things both of us agreed on was that many of the young men that has come to there, if they managed to get as far as him there in his, his company, there, who actually have been discouraged by their mothers when they tried to go for something that had to do with leveling their, their talents and skills and believing in themselves that they could do it. So the field that the mothers did not feel was an attractive field. How could you be a shoemaker? So according to him, he said many, many of the young people he had, the young men he had in his place, even the, the women, the ladies, there was a few ladies there. He said it was the mothers that were always putting down that vocation and telling them that oh, it's a waste of time, don't go and do that. And it had to require the, his, him, him getting involved sometimes with a young person and talking to the parent to say, leave the boy alone, leave the girl alone, let him come and learn. And then only after the person had succeeded and began to do well, the mother would then embrace what the child has chosen. So some of us need to really check our attitudes as parents. Sometimes we are the worst enemies that our kids can have. Even the world will be better, will be better, be better um, more receptive to our children than we are. And that's shameful. Right? Okay. So Njoku began to ask questions and pull through every content on computer programming he came across. You see, if you want to understand what that means, he read. 
okay he was already at a point where he had finished secondary level education he had the competence when you know how to read and write that's to know how to read and write you only need to finish secondary level education that is where your appointment with formal schooling should end in the new world all these university 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 you must intelligently decide on the contact you want to have with university education because some of it will kill your brain and your dreams you will see Njoku's story here and you understand what i'm saying born to an engineer father and a school teacher mother Njoku was a mathematics whiz he represented his school in the mathematics olympiad won several medals okay this is a secondary school guy you understand and lost a few when his mates had a single mathematics textbook that had different topics like geometry permutation and combination and more Njoku had a different textbook for each topic each textbook as big as all the the as the all comp all encompassing ones so you can see that this is the person that actually went the extra mile went way beyond what his peers were doing he wasn't using them as a measure of how much effort he should put in he was driven from within he knew he wanted to be better so he invested i'm sure he probably got money from his parents or wherever and was buying stuff to improve himself as a student that was why he excelled he didn't sit and behave like the others if they were playing he was probably studying so let's be clear this was a person that had passion and drive it wasn't just the average joe so we're not we're not saying that everybody's child is going to be like this but if you want to help your child you can help him or her discover him or herself and become like this or even better right my father forbade us from using a calculator to solve uh, mathematics for me now i started by saying he knew mathematics so every competition had to be done with your head why else you have a head Njoku said with this his problem solving skill was already top notch little wonder he was quick to embrace programming i mean look at it this way i was a very bad mathematics student okay so bad that when i finished school sat i had i think a uh, p7 if i recall correctly or p6 or whatever they call it i didn't have a decent grade so i needed to do um after the yak exams i did my gce again and there i got a1 in mathematics the reason because i got enrolled in a place called transfer training center just not far from Unilag, where I met a, a gentleman. Uh, I kind of forget. I don't kind of remember his name anymore. But he was from the east, somewhere in Ibo, Ibo, Ibo guy, and he told me how to beat mathematics. And from then on, I fell in love with using my head for maths. But the thing was, I still didn't want to do it as a kind of a passion. I just, I got the hang of it. I was on top of it. If I wanted to do it, I could do it. But I didn't care enough to want to pursue it beyond that. However, because it made me very comfortable with numbers, with figures, and with thinking calculating i fell in love also with spreadsheets later on when i got into my career job in guinness and that was what led me into spreadsheet programming eventually and i became extremely good at spreadsheet programming to the point that today i sell my own software i have my own branded software i sell them internationally I have clients in and out of africa it is all because i developed interest in using my brain and then i found a way to connect that passion for using my brain with technology and the internet it did not happen overnight over 20 years of hard work but you see my own was even slow progress look at this young man that's what i'm trying to say the world is at their feet this new generation all we have to do is help them by pointing them in the right direction all right because gaming was one of his favorite activities having played video games with his siblings at the time he began to learn game development and started using c plus plus to build games you see that there's a young boy also in lagos here who was interviewed by cnn he uses a uh, scratch that's the name of the software it's a very basic programming language to create games i think he had about 20 something games when he got to notice by cnn they came to nigeria here in lagos to interview him he's just i think just about eight years old but he had already written about 25 different games that were being downloaded seriously on i think on play store or something like that now imagine what that guy would be able to do by the time he's 15 with, with the environment he already has in his home where his father was the one that told him rather than play games why don't you try and build your own game that's what the father did the father just pointed him in the right direction that was all he had to do and the boy discovered a new world that is what parents are supposed to do for children. You don't have to micromanage them and tell them what to do step by step. Just observe them. Quietly. Notice what their talents, talents and passions are. Then give them the necessary guidance to discover how to connect their talents with the real world and make the most of it. That's all you have to do. You know. Um, so uh, I'll go on. Um, so in 2017 he wrote his final secondary school exam look at that he was already doing this before he finished secondary school and cleared all his papers with a plus in mathematics and further mathematics surprisingly his next challenge would be finishing university in other words he had challenges he never did finish university but let's go look at what he they've quoted him as saying there university was a waste of my time now here's here, here's what happened like most nigerian parents Njoku's parents wanted him to become a medical doctor typical 
uh, his older brother was already studying medicine again i say typically they could even make the whole family study medicine this is the same nonsense that I keep doing even in 2022 they still do it it's amazing parents need to stop it it's abusive you need to stop it but Undoku had chosen his own path one he wouldn't let go of for the world he got admission to study electrical engineering at Enugu state university of science and technology in 2018 this his engineer father could live with of course his engineer father was crazy. okay you're going to become an engineer okay that's still not bad if you're not going to be a doctor you could be a medical be an engineer right so uh laser pay early ideation sessions in dubai okay you can see him in dubai here i think he was doing some presentation or something anyway in the same year he joined quiver games a game company based in enugu as an intern everything was going okay his plate was full a task in engineering course and a job where he could build his coding skill but after a few classes in the first year he realized engineering wasn't as tasking as he had anticipated now hear his words hear his words i thought everything would be advanced but it was people packed into a small hall to learn social sciences and general studies you know what they do in the first year in the school now the nonsense they do you know all the ges bs i was like what the hell is going on here and the math they were teaching at 111 was like my gss3 ss1 math so it became a waste of my time this is where you now learn to think for yourself and not let your people think for you even if they are your parents i know a young man who was already functioning in the real world earning income as a skilled hairstylist who allowed people to push him back into the educational system the former schooling system in the university i do not agree with him Till today, I, I stand to be corrected. I know it was a big mistake for him to have gone back the way he did. He, he has insisted on doing it. I've not even heard from him in a long time. And I'm not even checking up on him. The point I'm making is, this young man knew what he needed to do. He didn't even, see, first year, he jumped out of the place. Because he knew it was going to kill him if he stayed longer in there. They just were not at his level. He was, at that time, you can imagine, he's 19 now. Imagine how old he was then, much younger. And he could see that. So he got out. He didn't listen to anybody. He knew what he needed to do. That is what you need to help your child develop. The ability to think for themselves. When you discover your purpose, when your child discovers his purpose, let him be able to pursue his purpose with passion. Don't try to use sentiment to drag him down, force him to do what you want. Because you cannot see what he can see. And it's from a different world from yours. He knew he wasn't going to do... Uh, another this for another five years so he became laser focused on coding he didn't argue with anybody he just started coding on campus anytime i was going to school i was going to charge my laptop and code i didn't tell my parents when they gave me money to buy textbooks i used to buy coding courses on udemy everybody knows udemy i know udemy i just don't do coding on them i don't learn coding on them because i'm not interested in that kind of coding but the point we made is this young man knew what he wanted to do he knew where to go they said education okay is knowing what you want and knowing where you need to go to get it that is education being educated that's what it means it's not about having a degree it's not about having a piece of paper it's being able to solve your own problems by yourself that's what being educated means that's what an educated person is many people don't know that that's why i said there's a difference between schooling and education schooling is what we're getting here many of us are not getting an education that's why when we finish school we're confused about how to get ahead in life I'm talking as a person that has gone through this entire process and I don't want my, I don't want anybody I know especially not my children to suffer the way I did to find my path because I have found my path a long time ago and I'm, I'm heading in the direction I want to go but the thing is I still see a lot of parents who are pushing their kids in the wrong direction that's why I'm doing all of the things I'm doing this video that's why I'm doing it all right his father somehow found out he had been missing classes and invited him home I didn't know it was a trick to seize my laptop I went back to school I had to borrow a laptop to finish some projects at hand and keep learning so you see, they took his laptop. He didn't stop him. You see, he knew. He was convinced. So he went to school, borrowed the laptop, continued. There are some times when you have to disobey. If you look at Aziza Toshuala's story, the young lady footballer who represented Nigeria for so many years. I think she still represents Nigeria. Um, African footballer of the year, blah, 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 blah. So many times. Plays for Arsenal. Plays, I mean, makes good money. Builds a house, uh, several houses or so. Now has an NGO for young ladies to, uh, to also pursue the same career. Look. The lady said her parents used to beat her when she used to go play football so she left home there are some times when your parents don't get it and if you allow them they will pull you down and you will never achieve your potential given to you by god so sometimes you need to walk away go and prove yourself right then come back and bring them back to join your your world because if you let them put you in that world you will all suffer together it doesn't make any sense walk away sometimes it's worthwhile to disobey all right when COVID-19 hit in 2020, he said it was a blessing in disguise, and everywhere was locked down. Everybody panicked and was scared. Njoku was somewhat happy. He'd be away from school without getting into trouble. It made sense. So he upped his game and started coding 12 hours a day. 
he didn't want to go back to school see this was not a young man looking for a time to spend with his colleagues this was a young man looking for time to build himself up he knew what he needed to do he knew what he needed to learn he just needed the time and the freedom to do it so when he saw covid 19 he didn't see it as well let me go back home and go and see my parents home and be grumbling that we can't go to school he transformed uh, he turned the opportunity you know into one that he could use to build himself up to achieve his goal he began to code more 12 hours a day while some other people were busy watching tv you know playing games ps ps 2000 what they call that thing he didn't want to go back to school and the only thing he had to learn as fast as he could uh, and the only thing he had was to learn as fast as he could and get a remote job did you get that a remote job people don't get it i keep telling people all the time i told many people i said you, are, you don't have a family like me so many of these young guys you don't have a family like me you don't have any baggage you don't have children you don't have anybody you are feeding go on the internet and do what people like this are doing learn a skill online then apply for remote job they are so many they don't give a damn what your face looks like if you can solve the problem they say they want to solve they will give you the job you do it online for them every day they will pay you i have been paid internationally in euros so i know that this is true I do not know why our young people choose to do all this ritual and all this nonsense the world is at your feet on the internet you do not have to live this kind of dirty life but it's a function of also of the environment the parents have created for them the parents make them feel that there's no other way to go except down they keep thinking they've got to go crooked because the parents are crooked the, 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 the leaders are crooked the senators are crooked the governors are crooked everybody looking at stealing physical money when digital money is there waiting for everybody to go and harvest it nobody's interested they don't want to use their brains because they are too intellectually indolent this is the reason why we're where we are so in march 2020 he got a job as a mobile application developer at quiver a buy now pay later company based in port Harcourt. the salary was 70,000. when i got it nobody could talk to me i was the biggest boy i knew my parents couldn't believe it. you could get a job during the pandemic when companies were laying people off you got to understand the digital world did not suffer like the physical world during the pandemic because the digital world, the digital world was where everybody turned when they could no longer operate physically remember those people that had companies that did not have websites suddenly needed websites those that were um, always operating in shops and all that suddenly needed to find a way to communicate with their customers through the internet so they need to develop platform mobile development platforms apps and all that and the thing did not last for one month it lasted for more than a year and it's even up till now we're still trying to recover from the effects of covid 19. so companies realized that they needed to embrace the internet fully so in nigeria suddenly companies changed their priorities and they were looking for coders looking for programmers looking for developers what call them what you have what whatever you will they were looking for them they were suddenly in demand those were jobs that were available around i was telling people i was still making money throughout the lockdown because my son, my clients were here, Mr. Shunabari, you said so, please, what can we do about this website issue? What can I do? I need this, I need that. I was being sought after during the lockdown. But some other people, they had to close shop because the only thing they had to offer was offline. Brick and mortar business. This is where embracing the new world is important. All right? So, though the salary was, isn't enough reason to study medicine, they finally saw that what I had, is, I had seen since 2015, his parents began to series it okay introduction to the blockchain before the pandemic njoku had already started learning about blockchain he taken udemy courses on blockchain and had entered the finals of a hackathon project that would be held that will be held in lagos in 2019 the first time he'd ever be in lagos look at that so i was saying a few weeks ago no just uh, that was about two, three years ago he was in lagos all right that's the photo of him there uh in april 2020 a month after i started working at quiver he got another offer as a blockchain developer at project hydro i don't know any of this company so a lot that i'm making any claims uh a blockchain company based in um the british virgin island and there are links there so when you when i send you when you provide it when you click on the link to the article you can click on the links for each of these uh, names that have been mentioned and you can explore them for that for some of those of you that might have interest in looking for opportunities he will be paid 700 dollars monthly in hydro tokens at this point he knew he wasn't going back to school everything happening to him agreed with that decision fast forward to september 2020 he wanted to leave Quiver and needed something to replace it. So he reached out to Gotuku Aron, the co-founder at Zend, the parent company of Quiver Games, where he'd interned for five months to take it there was an opening. After sharing what he'd done at Project Hydro, the decentralized wallet, snowflake infrastructure for decentralized identity, Aronu invited him to come to Enugu and join his new venture, Zend Finance, a decentralized finance platform for credit unions, cooperatives, and individuals backed by Google and Binance. Watch that. So these are there are 
there are entities operating in nigerian space that are backed by very powerful brands internationally that tells you the kind of confidence those people have in the the uh the potential of this technology so if you get your child to have a skill that this market requires that child cannot go hungry that is why this young man man before he was 19 was getting all this attention some people say there was no job look at him getting offer after offer moving from job to job and some people are sitting down there doing yahoo it makes no sense but somebody needs to tell you the truth maybe they didn't know now you are going to know through this video after this video good luck to anybody who still decides to go and do the naughty things that uh, we are complaining about at the time the pandemic was already easing up and the students had started going back to school so Njoku told his father he was good he was going back to school i don't know make the man offer one fifty thousand net salary a macbook and free accommodation that's powerful some people don't even get one tenth of that and there are even already people who are who are graduates of, from university <laughs> oh my god so another photo of him here in zen finance blah 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 i went to Podako to show my parents the offer and i and told them i was dropping out of school it was obvious they couldn't do anything about it going back to school just to graduate and earn about half as much as i was already earning wasn't wise i mean look at that you know this is what i tell people all the time they say oh you did not go to university no. what university especially in nigeria what, what is the university offering you which university who are the people teaching there the people teaching there I ask the question all the time do you know any lecturer in the university who is a millionaire and i mean millionaire in dollars do you know any lecturer or uh, any professor who is a millionaire i mean if going to school made you rich school teachers will be millionaires that's what robert kiyosaki said till today everybody can see that he, he's right and yet people continue to push this thing even the people that are, that are graduates from university and are struggling to survive using that thing they study from university are still pushing their kids in that direction why i don't want them to say my child don't go to university how stupid can you get Untoku's father thankfully listen to reason the young man is making them proud he doesn't have any university degree but the things he has the skills he possesses and the certifications and qualifications he has the the, the achievements the accomplishments he has recorded already before the age of 19 speak volumes some people are 50 years old they don't have one tenth of that we have gone beyond that nonsense now the paper the world of paper certifications and accreditation and all that is gone this is the world where your skilled accomplishments are going to be required of you what can you do for us is what people are going to ask you not what paper qualification do you have what did you study no who do you know no what can you do is what people are going to ask you better help your child to be able to answer that question with, in a way that will make them engage him or her all right it was at this point that his parent knew and accepted Njoku's crazy idea to drop out at Zen Finance he had to step in when the lead blockchain engineer was unavailable and that accelerated his blockchain knowledge despite the close call since they already scheduled to launch by December 20th he led 2020 he led the build but not without a hiccup uh, he's, he's speaking now it was difficult because I had to take charge of an entire project in the middle of building I fixed the bug wrote and deployed smart contracts but i made a deployment error that cost the company ten thousand dollars so aremu told so aaron told him the money he lost will be deducted from his salary at this point his salary had jumped to three hundred thousand naira he panicked and started applying to international jobs at least those ones could pay him enough money to service the debt all right so that's a photo of him there he would then later find out aaron was only joking but by then he had gotten an offer from Maker Dell, one of the biggest DeFi companies in the world. He was the first Nigerian engineer on the team. As usual, he went home to show his parents his new offer, and his mother couldn't believe her dropout son could earn near three thousand dollars per month. But that was the beginning. After Maker Dell, he went. The offers wouldn't stop coming. He got a contract offer from Instadap, a DeFi company, protocol company, for ninety dollars per hour. It was like these people don't know me i work 20 hours per day so that's like you know, saying man i'm gonna make all this money he resigned from zen finance and was ready to make his mark on the global blockchain ecosystem he relocated to dubai just think about that relocating to the republic alone self is stress for some of us he relocated to dubai yeah you know what that means in, in monetary terms dubai was his passport to the world Macadao was having an off-site um, meetup in portugal and Injoku was supposed to go but his visa wasn't approved on time he was frustrated and so his aunt the robotic engineer you see now see what i said at the beginning where you just step in play your role and step out to get out of the way the aunt like i said this this lady needs to be given some kind of award 
this lady once again steps in advised him to try applying to travel to europe from ghana or anywhere else you see she brought in her expertise she was not jealous she was not uh, intimidated by the fact that these boys go probably go to fly over my head and be earning 10 times what i earn become more famous than me blah 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 i'm the one that showed him rodo he didn't bother her she still came her she came through for him and said go this way do this do this because she had the experience she had travel experience he didn't have and she came through for him she also suggested dubai and i took it after staying in dubai for a month i told her i'm not going back home in dubai more job opportunities came he was, on, he was on top of the world he could now reject offers and travel the world for an 18 year old boy there was enough money in the bank so he told his father to leave his brother's medical school tuition to him think about that for an 18 year old to be able to tell his father daddy forget the money for medical school. do you know how expensive medical school is whether here or anywhere else now 18 year old boy who dropped out of school now paying medical school. i tell people all the time going to school has nothing to do with being able to make money there are two different separate things now the guy who dropped out of school is one now paying school fees to board for the one who wants to finish school how does that make any sense you would have thought you'd be the other way around you didn't go to school let me pay your school fees let me use my qualification to, to be that i'm going to get in a few years time let me need to get a job and then be able to pay money for you that you don't have any qualification from school it's the other way around that's why we need to reinvent our education system so my brother is in bulgaria so imagine earning in naira and paying tuition in euro so it's only right i took that off my father's plate imagine that so the father was not a small boy in terms of income in naira terms but imagine what the son could do given the exchange rate and him earning money directly in foreign foreign exchange i tell people all the time the, the coding skill allows you to earn income from any part of the world in foreign exchange so if we wanted to change the fortunes of nigeria and even make the naira stronger all we have to do is build an army of programmers simple and make our programmers become offer their programming services to people across the world without doing anything dishonest and we will we, we begin to earn thousands of dollars of income every day imagine if we had an army of programmers like india has why do you think india is i mean india is known worldwide for making billions of dollars from sales of software the average indian youth is, is, is knows coding from primary school some of you don't know that he got a contract offer of three thousand dollars per week from Avir, avatar a blockchain security company based in singapore he joined them and built their entire blockchain infrastructure look at that those are things that when added to a cv will be intimidating right here he is with uh, suleiman co-founder and uh, cto at uh, laser pay in dubai right they're both in dubai then he met yele balamosi founder and ceo at nescoin who will later become one of laser pays early investors so look at the people who are seeing promise and potential in him and they were putting money down you see this was not a guy begging this was a the guy they saw could deliver so they invested in but you see he said luck is what happened when preparation meets opportunity this young man had been working hard on himself remember when he was studying in school and decided to switch to coding as against wasting the time in the lectures that were that i knew were not going to help him he began to code building himself up taking courses nobody told him he was pushing he knew what he needed to do then all those things paid off when people began to meet he said wow you can do this you can do this you can do this and those people began to put money down because they knew he could so he could do it for them that's how it's supposed to be you don't just sit around and wait for miracles to happen you make the miracles happen by yourself if you're not willing to do that then you're not ready to succeed right so um but then he went to meet yele balamosi founder and ceo at netcom nescom who will later become of one of the, the best in early investors but i was then became doku's mentor so when he wanted to start nescoin doku was one of the first engineers he reached out to it was around the this time that the idea to build laser pay began to form in his mind in joko's mind he dropped everything to focus on laser pay avatar reached out with a full-time offer of seven thousand dollars per month and fifty thousand dollars worth of avatar talking but he rejected it look at that this is what some people will give up an arm and a leg for this young man was at a point where he knew so much what he wanted he knew he had the skills to achieve what he wanted and he knew he just needed the time and resources to build it up to what he wanted so he knew he could afford to say no to the other offers because he knew what he was going to get would be bigger than what they were offering him they came back with another offer of i mean literally double isn't it uh 15 000 per month but Ndoku was running with his new vision now before the vision was to become a great before the vision was going to us to, to become a great engineer but now it was become it was to become a great founder all right so Ndoku um, forfeited everything he left Makadao in uh, December 2021. December 2021. This is February 2022. And his maker 
token that was worth over two hundred thousand dollars and would have and would have vested this february he rejected a salary package worth over three hundred thousand dollars from avatar all because he believed laser pay is the future of payment and will be worth much more than everything he's given up and also because he was already raising funds and had to put his skin in the game in other words you put your money where your mouth is people are putting their money down to invest in your idea you've got to demonstrate faith so that they will also feel comfortable you know so that's basically the idea and um, he knew what he wanted from a young age and stood by it his steadfastness has turned everyone around him into a believer his parents have now begun nudging his youngest siblings to study software engineering and your cousin zuckerberg i may never be but he's building his own empire in the blockchain world at 19 this can only be the beginning of his journey right uh, i think this whole story is um, self-explanatory it's clear what um, the message is i do not know if as you're listening to this if you're still battling with any doubts in your mind yeah it goes without saying of course that not all children will have this gift or will have the passion to develop this kind of discipline in their heart because some people have a gift some people have multiple gifts all right and they, they may choose not to uh, develop the gift because they have some other interest you know so it depends on what the child is going to say but the truth of the matter is that if any child wants to build himself up to success in any area of endeavor today there is going to be a one or two ways that technology can be leveraged to help him or her succeed more so all that child has to be doing is to be encouraged to look for a way to merge whatever he's doing with technology and he can look forward to achieving unprecedented success in pursuing his or her uh, vision and that's what Njoko has done here but he did it by himself he, did, he refused to be distracted by his brain who, who failed to see what he was seeing we need to create an environment that allows young people like this to flourish where in case their parents are not seeing it they can come somewhere else where they can be nourished okay by other people who are capable of believing you know, he was lucky he ran into the right people and of course the internet gave him um, an, an outlet okay for expression but so, some of that youth may not have access to those resources okay so and that's why we need to create I, i'm doing this because hopefully through this stuff like this when more and more voices like mine are kind of coming out and raising awareness about this some person or persons whose children are struggling with this kind of experience may be able to understand and see reason and help their child to achieve his true purpose in life right i hope this has been useful to you uh, believe me uh, today and into the future technology is going to drive change in literally every society on the planet it doesn't matter whether it's a village or it's a city and if you let your child get involved now very early he might become one of the change agents that's going to be a leader all right I'll be finding you so if you have any questions, reach out to me. I wish you well.